partial pressure of gases is the key behind their exchange in the body. This is what we've learned so far. But is the process as easy as it seems? For us, from what we've studied so far, the process is simple. RBCs grab the oxygen that diffuses in the bloodstream from alveoli and pass it to the cells. Inversely, carbon dioxide gets in the RBCs to bind with the hemoglobin and gets transported to the lungs. But trust me, the processes are not that simple. Any idea how the binding takes place? How do the molecules bind to hemoglobin? What happens after the binding? And what happens when the bonds are broken to deliver the respective molecules at the respective sites? Let's answer all these queries in this video. Let's begin with what happens in the alveoli. Here, the partial pressure of oxygen is greater than that of carbon dioxide. Thus, the carbon dioxide molecules are made to leave the hemoglobin. And oxygen occupies the place. Each oxygen binds to the ion component, that is the hem group of the hemoglobin molecule. Thus, a single hemoglobin can usually carry four oxygen molecules. The binding of oxygen to hemoglobin helps in the formation of a complex called the oxyhemoglobin. But this complex formation is not very easy. Factors like temperature, hydrogen ion concentration, and also the concentration of carbon dioxide molecules around influence the binding of the oxygen. Along with this, there is one more factor that accounts for the binding. It's the structure of the binding site. We know that the structure of a molecule changes as it binds to any other atom or molecule. So here, when the ion group binds to the carbon dioxide, the shape of the protein changes reversibly. Now when the oxygen is about to bind, the change of shape has to be reversed. So this is one more influential factor for the binding of oxygen. After all the factors are proof, oxygen molecules bind to the ion group and form the complex of oxyhemoglobin. This is then taken to the cells where the oxygen dissociates due to increase in the partial pressure compared to that in the cells. The cells on the other hand have a higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So now imagine a scenario where the partial pressure of oxygen is lower in cells and higher in the RBC and at the same time, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high in the cells and extremely less in the RBCs. It's obvious that the oxygen molecules will dissociate and get into the cells. Thus, the oxyhemoglobin structure will get disrupted and the hemoglobin protein will again get altered. Now it's all set to receive carbon dioxide molecules for which it has equal affinity. The binding of carbon dioxide leads to the formation of another complex named the carbaminohemoglobin. This is then carried to the lungs where the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is still lower. And here the scene is totally reversed. Now the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher than that of oxygen in the RBCs in contrast to the cells as seen earlier. And the partial pressure of oxygen is lower in the RBCs compared to the lungs. So the exchange and complex formation takes place once again. This is how the gases are transported. So are oxygen and carbon dioxide always carried in the form of these two complexes throughout the body? Well, not exactly. There is a lot more to know in this. A lot of oxygen, approximately more than 95%, is transported by the RBCs. The remaining amount is transported by the plasma as oxygen dissolves in it easily. And the story of carbon dioxide is totally different. There is an interesting twist here. Hardly 20-23% of carbon dioxide is carried in the form of carbaminohemoglobin. Hold on, did I just say around 23% only? Then what about the remaining amount? How is so much of carbon dioxide transported then? Well, carbon dioxide is mainly transported through the plasma. This occurs in two forms. Around 7% is carried as dissolved solution in the plasma and the remaining 70% is carried in the form of bicarbonate. 
the conversion of carbon dioxide into bicarbonates is carried out by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. This enzyme converts carbon dioxide and water to give bicarbonates and hydrogen ions. And where does this happen? The conversion and the transport are all carried out in the RBC itself. That's right. The enzyme is present in the RBC and converts the carbon dioxide and water reversibly in bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. So the majority of the carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonates. But we do not exhale bicarbonates. So how does the system work? How is carbon dioxide made available during exhalation? Well, the simple answer is reconversion. The bicarbonate and the hydrogen ion produced are converted back to carbon dioxide and water as the RBCs reach the alveoli. This is performed by the same enzyme carbonic anhydrase. In a nutshell, majority of oxygen is transported by binding to the hemoglobin protein. On the other hand, carbon dioxide is transported mostly in the form of bicarbonates in the RBCs and the remaining in the form of carbaminohemoglobin in the RBC and dissolved carbon dioxide in the plasma. This is how transport of the two gases is carried out. Now, if we plot a graph of partial pressure of oxygen against the percent saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen, then a sigmoid curve is obtained. This is called the oxygen dissociation curve. And is this really very useful? Well, it has a significant role to play in the study of several factors that affect breathing. But we will discuss about this graph in detail in the higher grades. For now, let's get back to respiration and learn some more interesting facts about it. Meet you in the next video. Until then, do subscribe to our channel. Happy learning!